Thank you for participating in KIW conference as a keynote speaker. I'm sure that your keynote speech will inspire the Korean investors. Well, my pleasure. Thank you for being here today. And uh, I look forward to our discussion. Good. And first of all, you uh, start your uh, presentation. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, the, the, the first thing I wanted to share with you is uh, I try and always uh, keep up with what people, other people are thinking. And I had uh, a dinner last night with a group of the top investors in New York. Mm. Uh, and the consensus is really surprising. Listen to this. Uh, the range on the S&P for the end of next year, mm -hmm. the S&P is like 4,500 now. Right. It was uh, 3,300 to 5,300. And, and, and that's, you know, it's amazing. Uh, I'll give you one more, uh, but the slide is here, you know, for uh, our guest here. Uh, the CPI, 1% to 4% mm -hmm. for next, next year. So uh, all these have enormous ranges, which is to say that uh, if you had somebody else <laughs> here, <laughs> you might have a, a very different uh, perspective uh, on what's happening. Uh, my first uh, point is that I think monetary policy is extremely tight and extremely important. And I've, I'm older than anybody else you will interview and anybody else <laughs> in this conference. Uh, and so I've been through so many cycles that uh, it gives me confidence uh, that the monetary tightening will work, even though the economy today is very strong. And the global economy is pretty strong in general. Uh, so this is, uh, is a slide in 2006 and seven. The yield curve inverted in the summer of 06, and nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. And during that period, the S&P rallied 20%. And real GDP growth in late 07 was two and a half. And then the market peaked and eight weeks later, we had the great recession. Uh, so we're a $25 trillion economy and it takes a long time to turn it. Uh, and uh, I put this here a little bit, some of the questions that you and I discussed, but in the summer of 07, bond yields had a big spike because people said, there's no recession. <laughs> it's, it's not gonna happen. And so bond yields went up uh, and then they started to come, come down. But uh, so it, that's the, the yield curve, first part. It takes a long time to, to impact. Uh, and I also put in here, because we talked about inflation, gasoline prices went straight up in late 07 and into 08. Amazing. Uh, along, uh, so it's not, this business is very difficult, uh, but I have a North Star, which is the monetary tightening. Uh, and this chart is a picture of the money supply. First one is the yield curve, very inverted. And the money supply is down about 4%. The biggest contraction since the 1930s. Uh, I got two torpedoes in the water here uh, that are possibly coming you know, toward our boat. Uh, and then this is the Fed's balance sheet, which is going down, down, down. So you have two things here. The rates are going up and the balance sheet's going down. And the San Francisco Fed says, if you combine them, it means that the fund rate is already 7%, which is obviously pretty high. So those are the three things that make me think uh, a recession is coming, uh, but in the meantime, uh, inflation uh, is coming down. And in the 1970s, uh, during which time I was already working, <laughs> uh, we had three run-ups in inflation, uh, and all three were associated with an acceleration in the money supply. Uh, 
Arthur Burns did a poor job, and we got inflation three times. Uh, and they were in part because of a surge in oil prices. And so the question is, what came first? Did oil push up inflation? Or did the money supply create the increase in oil prices which pushed up inflation? Which would be my view of that uh, period. Uh, this is the ECB balance sheet. Uh, it's coming down and there's the policy rates there. So we're having a global tightening. This is the money supply uh, in the Eurozone, it's now contracting, and bank loans are now only up 1%. So I'm showing a cause, and I think the result uh, of that, uh, and then this is the UK, money supply is negative, and house prices are negative. So again, I'm showing you something I think is relevant, and then the way it is impacting the system. <sighs> That's that. <laughs> there, uh, aside from that, uh, I, there are, s are seven things that are problems now on the horizon. Uh, one uh, is a student debt problem. Uh, gasoline prices going up, you have strikes coming up, uh, you have the uh, debt, could have a debt impasse again, uh, and then you have China and Europe as two separate problems. Um, so uh, this is a picture of student loans, which is really surprising me at how much people are paying off student loans all of a sudden. But uh, so uh, I made a list of seven things that would make me think we're in recession, none of which are present. Our company surveys, which I'll show you, they're still high. Uh, unemployment claims came out this morning. They're down. They're still low. I'll spare the rest. but. We're not in recession. And uh, I went to the US Open last week. It is the most busy I've ever seen. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, home builders are still strong. Uh, and But that could change because mortgage rates are now back up. The BAA spread, which is one of my key uh, things to keep me out of trouble, it's very relaxed. There's no pressure there. Uh, and the PMI is still above 50. These are company surveys. Uh, every week we survey about 300 companies, same ones, mm -hmm. uh, retailers, home builders, auto dealers, and ask them, how's business? They say, it's fine. It was uh, like 51, and recession is like 47. So, so far, economy is, is just fine. But it was just fine in 07. Uh, it's, it's okay till it's not. And these are unemployment claims, came out this morning. And if you could see, just before the recession, the Great Recession, uh, claims were doing nothing, but then they shot up. Uh, so I think monetary tightening is working. This is a picture of uh, increases in employment. They were 600,000 a month, then five, then 400,000, then 300,000, 200,000, and now they're 150. So I can see the pattern, and I assume it's gonna keep going until they're somewhat negative, maybe in the spring of, of next year. This is a temp employment, which happens to be a very good uh, leading indicator in employment. Uh, temporary jobs are the first to go. Uh, and that's now come down clearly. Uh, these are mortgage apps for purchase. Uh, they've been making new lows, mortgage rates are up. Uh, and then I, I, I'll say this, many times, but uh, judging by monetary policy, uh, the recession might not start until May of next year, uh, which is a long time from now. There are already lots of signs of global stress, and uh, I have China exports, Germany, a, a bunch today, and so I put in Alan Greenspan, 1998. It's not credible that the U.S. can remain an oasis of prosperity unaffected by uh, increased stress outside the U.S. So there's a lot of that. Uh, back in the U.S., this is housing of uh, monthly mortgage payments. They're up 90% in two years. The biggest increase ever was 40% in uh, 09. But that's in the U.S. is Germany, Germany, U.S. rail car loadings. So I don't feel like I'm barking up the wrong tree 
it just takes a, a while to climb that tree up to where the economy really weakens. Uh, the uh, quits rate came out last week. It's down, and it suggests that the employment cost index slows down. So now I'm, I'm starting to weave together pressure on economy with being pressure on prices. They're the same, uh, you know, in, in general. And we do a survey every week of rents, 750,000 apartment units. Uh, we survey 15 companies, and that's dropping sharply. Uh, and so the shelter CPI will come down a lot next year. This is the U.S. GDP price deflator. Uh, in the second quarter, it was 2% uh, quarter to quarter annual rate. It's the broadest measure. Uh, other measures like the core are not down to two. So the Fed should not declare victory, but I can sort of anticipate that they're going to. Uh, and uh, our trader here who uh, specializes in, in consumer trading stocks, uh, he put together this list. There are 20 companies, 24 companies. I'll, I'll read just one, Best Buy. Uh, this decline in sales is a negative aspect of consumer behavior and it indicates reduced consumer spending in the industry. I have uh, 24 of those uh, just from this week. Uh, I'll let people read them. Uh, and there's always anecdotal evidence of downward pressure on prices. For example, Disney is slashing the price of Disney Plus. They're definitely prices going up, but there are also some examples of prices going down. Uh, this is a chart of the employment cost index uh, which I mentioned earlier, it's going to come down to 4%, I think, in the fourth quarter. So that's the picture I have. Uh, I think inflation is slowing first. It's slowing a lot. Uh, so I would assume the Fed is, is done. Uh, and that makes the stock market happy. And uh, we don't have a recession now. And I think we will. But I had dinner with a group last night, and it was completely split. <laughs> And so people say, well, maybe we won't have a recession, and it's not now, and maybe it won't start for three months, six months. So in the meantime, the you know, market tends to go up, uh, and so that's where we end up today. Let me turn it back over to you. Okay. Thank you very much for the, your insp inspirational uh, well, speech. I'm, I'm not sure it's inspirational, but it's my pleasure to meet with you. Yeah, you seem to have uh, strong convictions that an inverted yield cover will cause a recession. Um, however, there has been a few times uh, in the past where inversions have occurred, but no recessions have emerged. And again, this time, the consumer is very strong. And it is said that this time is different. <laughs> uh, what do you think? So I have three things. First, the money supply is contracting the most since the 1930s. Second, Fed funds and QT is really unprecedented. I showed you the uh, monthly mortgage payment, which we can understand, you know, up 90%. Uh, and then thirdly, you have the yield curve. And so I have studied the yield curve and uh, have determined what a signal is. If the yield curve is inverted for 35 minutes, doesn't <laughs> signal. <laughs> so when I do my, uh, analysis of it, it's never missed. Seven recessions, seven times, the yield curve has always worked. The, the last time uh, in 06, 07, uh, many people said, because it didn't work for 18 months, <laughs> that it's different this time, a and it wasn't. But well, the point I'm trying to make uh, with you is that I have three possible sources of recession, not just the inverted yield curve, but the contraction of money and the, just the increase in interest rates with QT. Uh, so I got three chances <laughs> to be right. And you mentioned about uh, money supply and M2 continues to decline. The Fed continued to do the QT. The Treasury Department right. is right. issuing a lot of debt. Right. Uh, still, the stock market is very strong. Has the correction between the uh, correlation between the uh, liquidity and market disappear? I think it's a question of timing. I mentioned that in 06, 07, before the Great Recession, the S&P rallied 20%. Mm -hmm. 
and peaked eight weeks before the recession started. And so during that period, uh, the Fed was not forecasting a recession. Uh, and the Fed didn't have a recession even in the first part of 08. So there can be times when the market goes up even though liquidity is being drained. But I should mention this. The money supply went up 30% uh, in 01, 21, 22. And now it's down 5%. So it's still up. Right. The, the level is still very high. Right. Uh, and there's a lot of liquidity in the system. And it, it takes, maybe this is not unique, it just takes a long time uh, once the economy becomes as prosperous as it's gotten uh, to get it to roll over. But uh, I should mention that, that I have plenty of evidence to make me think I'm at the right tree. Uh, I mentioned like temp employment coming down or the retailers saying that business is getting a little bit softer. The beige book that came out yesterday, you know, said business is getting softer and wages are, are slowing. Uh, the LEI has been coming down for a long time. So I don't feel like I'm in, in the desert without any water. <laughs> I have, I'm having a drink every now and then uh, each day that, that looks like the economy is, is slowing. Uh, I mentioned the employment gains slowing. From six hundred thousand to one fifty, it'd probably take another, you know, three to six months uh, for this to work. When it happens, uh, I listed seven things that will let me know when it's happening, like our company surveys or unemployment claims or the BWA spread. When it happens, uh, I'll know, and then I'll work with my team here, and we'll see if that was a time when the market would go down. But at the moment, it looks like it's easier for it to go up even though liquidity situation is, is a negative for it. If the recession comes, it will be milder or severe. Uh, if recession is milder, yeah. the stock market correction will be milder? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think there's a, a pretty good chance it could be severe, mm. or at least a hard landing. Mm. Uh, these uh, three things I mentioned, uh, contraction of money, the most since the 1930s. Inverted yield curve, in my opinion, or my analysis, never missed. Uh, and then you have a 7% funds rate, uh, if you include the quantitative tightening, which you mentioned. So I, I, I think we could have you know, a very serious downturn. And uh, you have China as an uncertainty, and then you have Europe. Uh, the group I met with last night uh, Ninety percent of the people there thought Europe would be in, in recession. It, it, it could deteriorate significantly once the U.S. economy weakens. Mm. But so far, the U.S. economy is strong, and other places like Japan are strong, <laughs> Korea is strong, <laughs> and uh, it takes time. Okay. Um, in the 1970s, the U.S. inflation did not come down all at once, you mentioned. And it rebounded and formed a double top before falling. Is there a possibility that it will happen again? I don't think you seem to uh, don't agree about that. No, I don't. So, uh, the uh, you know, I read as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And uh, that period uh, is now the sort of poster boy for inflation reaccelerating, because inflation went up, came down, then went up, came down, and then it went up again. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, each time it went up, there was an acceleration in the money supply. Uh, the Fed, I think, was simply doing a poor job, and Milton Friedman became like a rock star, because he said, I have the answer to your problem. You're causing inflation to go up because money supply is accelerating. And money supply would accelerate to something like 15% each of those times. This Now money supply is contracting. You, you look for things, you say, I can't take this. And I showed you that in uh, 07, uh, gasoline prices, oil prices had a big spike, actually going, go, actually including in the early part of the recession in 08. The price of oil going up is definitely a problem. Uh, it's mainly a problem for the consumer. Uh, and we might not have time to discuss it, but uh, as you know, next year is an election year. 
and my view of things is pretty negative for the president to run again if the economy is in recession mm -hmm. and if gasoline prices haven't come down. Uh, that's the thing that people look at the most. Mm -hmm. And uh, for all of us as individuals, uh, like if you're paying $8,000 a month for rent, mm -hmm. which is a lot, uh, if six months later is still $8,000, mm -hmm. the main thing you notice is that it's $8,000. Even though in the CPI statistic, it, it, it'll be zero inflation right. for that six month period. The gasoline's expensive, cars are expensive, rents are expensive, US Open tickets are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And 10 year yields continue to rise. The reason cited for this include the deglobalization, demographic changes, and the increase in treasure debt issues. Uh, do you think an era of uh, structural low rate and low inflation is over? Uh, Larry Summers, okay. Bill Gross, they said uh, structural changes. I'm not sure why, uh, but I'm somewhat of a contrarian. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, I've been in the business for 50 years. I think to succeed in this business, you have to be somewhat of a contrarian. If your con view is the consensus, it has less of a chance to be a money-making idea. Now the consensus can be right for a long time, so you cannot just dismiss it to be hard-headed about it. But uh, I think inflation in the next year or two could come down below 2% quite easily. Mm -hmm. Say, for example, the $8,000 rent or the $50,000 car, maybe they stay at that price for a year or two, uh, called the basis effect or demand destruction. Uh, and inflation could come below 2%. So I, uh, we, we might have I lean toward the view of structurally higher inflation, but I think in the next year or two, it might move on the downside, and rates could end up on the downside. You know, the Fed a year and a half ago had Fed funds at zero, and they were saying this inflation is transitory, and, and that was a very poor <laughs> assessment of things. Right. Uh, and now they're in the place we're going to stay higher longer, which may be true, I, I, I doubt it. But uh, I can assess things every day uh, and readjust my views as new information comes in. Mm -hmm. Like higher gasoline prices is new information mm -hmm. on the high side. Mm -hmm. But uh, checking uh, with the employment numbers, they're coming on the low side. And you know, 25 companies this week have said that sales are challenging. And the beige book say sales are challenging. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm sticking around. Okay. As that means it's a good time to buy the treasury right now. It's possible. I don't, uh, you can always tell whether you agree with that by whether you want to do it yourself. At one point when treasury yields were very high, I owned a lot of bonds mm -hmm. and then I sold, sold them all and I haven't really bought them again one way or the other, but uh, uh, maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, if deglobalization drive the world into two blocks like uh, Chinese yeah. and US, uh, what will happen to the commodity prices such as uh, energy? There is a view that oil prices will rise sharply as Russia and Saudi Arabia and Iran, they join the Chinese block. And why are some say that the uh, commodity prices will not be significantly affected. Just like uh, after the outbreak of the uh, Ukrainian war, uh, oil prices spiked, but it soon stabilized as time passed. So uh, on this topic, my n North Star comes back to tight monetary policy. Mm. Uh, but when I moved from that to your question, uh, if China is soft or not strong, I think it keeps down our pressure on oil prices. Even if the if there's a block, uh, Saudi, etc., um, cutting supply. Uh, so right now, uh, price of oil is up, the price of jet fuel is up, 
and uh, there's talk that the airline will raise fares. But at the moment, fares are coming down, uh, mainly U.S. fares, not global, uh, international travel. Uh, but U.S. fares are coming back down from very high levels uh, because the demand is softening. The key, uh, in some ways, is what happens to employment. And if employment stays strong, uh, then you could hire oil prices, hire gasoline prices, hire every prices. Uh, but as I mentioned, increases in employment have slowed you know, significantly from over 600,000 to under 200,000. I can spot a trend. <laughs> and that's a trend I think is being uh, perpetuated by the tight monetary uh, policies. And so I think it'll keep on going. And if that happens, uh, then companies will have less pricing power and eventually oil will come back down. It, uh, in short, that means uh, the commodity prices will depend on the supply and demand, not like a world divided yeah. into two blocks. <laughs> right. Uh, I think it's a very interesting point you're raising about the, 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 two, the two blocks. Mm -hmm. I've been surprised that China is not stronger today. Mm -hmm. Early this year, I thought China would be leading the world economy. Mm -hmm. I've been surprised that the policy response in China uh, has not been stronger. Right. Now, every day, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. So maybe they, you know, come up with a, a big package. But so far, mm -hmm. uh, it's not. And when I look at the world economy in that two blocks, uh, it, it doesn't make me feel good about the world economy. It doesn't lift my animal spirits and my interest in you know, building a new factory or buying a new house or something. So it sort of keeps a, a damper on psychology. Whereas I thought right now, uh, we might have a positive psychological picture. Now, obviously the war has come in, which really clouds the European mind more than here. And then you have China, you know, clouding the picture in Asia, as you mentioned earlier on, uh, for its neighbors, not exactly uh, friendly. That's my last question. Uh, thank you for uh, your insightful lecture and bright answers and everything for you. Well, my pleasure. So I, the, uh, I'm also very happy to be on this group with my good friend Jason Trinnert. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, People are gonna, going to the Seoul. I know. <laughs> so, uh, if you see him, give him my very best. Thank you very much, sir.